Hi right, guys, welcome to the channel. If you're new, it's great to have you. So this video is going to be about spreads, what they are, how they've worked out, and some things you really should be aware of. All right, so the first question you want to know is what is the spread? Now, the spread is basically the difference between the bid and the ask price. And effectively, all it is is the broker's way of making money off of the trade. Every time you trade, you will have a spread. And as you might have seen on your platform, whatever platform you use, this one that I'm using at the moment, at the moment is TradingView. When you go to buy or sell a currency, you will probably have two icons that either say buy and sell or bid and ask. All right, so on your platform, you may have seen these two numbers, your bid and your ask. So basically the bid just means the sell price and the ask is your buy price. The 0.002 is two pips and that is the spread. So that is the difference between your bid and your ask and that effectively is what your spread is. Now you might hear uh, brokers especially call this a markup as well. Just know that that is just another word for spread. So if you wanted to buy the, so like this was the pound and we wanted to buy the pound at 1.002 and sell it straight away, you'd make a loss of two pips. So let's say you brought it and then sold it instantly, you would make a loss of two pips. So basically what this means is that the, your trade has to move two pips in your favor before you make a profit. So if you was to enter a position with a two pip spread at one micro lot or 0.01 lots, 1000 units, you'd be down 20p as soon as you enter that position. If you was to enter on one mini lot, 0.1 lots, 10,000 units, then you'd be down to enter that position. Or alternatively, one standard lot, you'd be down as soon as you entered into that position. So the spread is just literally the broker's markup on selling you the currency. And this, the spread is going to change, right, depending on your agreement with the broker. So you can either have a fixed spread or a variable spread. So the variable spread is going to move, it's going to fluctuate, right, and it's going to change depending on the instrument you're trading, uh, you know, the currency pair, the time of the day, depending on news events as well. So basically the reason why it changes is because sort of more active times in the day where there's more market participants, there's going to be there's going to be a lot more liquidity in the market. And if you're unsure of what liquidity means, then check out the video tagged here because that I explain what liquidity is in there. So in the Forex market, every time we want to buy, we need someone willing to sell. And every time that we want to sell, we need someone who wants to buy. So we need someone to fill the opposite side of our order every time. And that is basically what liquidity is. And at certain times of the day, the liquidity is going to be much higher and there's going to be a lot more people trading. So it's easier for the broker to fill your orders and for you to get in and out of trade. So that being the case, the spread is generally going to be lower and it's going to be cheaper for you to trade. Exactly the same as on certain currency pairs. So a lot of the major pairs that are traded quite a lot and there's a lot of liquidity, they're generally going to be cheaper for you to trade because they have lower spreads. So some of the uh, exotic pairs like the South African Rand, even some of the miners, they're going to have higher spreads because they're not quite as liquid. So it's going to, you know, the cost is going to be passed back to you as the trader. So fixed spreads, right? What they are is that is it's basically exactly what it says on the tin, right? It's a fixed spread. So the broker will have, you know, an agreement with the interbank sort of beforehand and they will have an agreed price on what it costs you to get in and out of a position. Now, generally this means that the spreads will be a lot lower and therefore they will charge you a commission, but this isn't always a bad thing, right? Especially if you're day trading. So if you're day trading, you may want to consider, you, you should definitely consider a fixed spread or a broker with a fixed spread because they will because obviously you can allow for the spread in your testing right because you always know what it's going to be you know what your commission is going to be and they're generally very reasonable the commissions you're going to have you're going to know what your commission is you'll know what your spread is so if you're in and out of trades all the time day trading like you know you're taking 
a lot of trades every day, you can allow for this in your testing. If you use a variable spread or you know a broker that provides you with a variable spread when you're day trading, this could be very, very, very damaging for traders because you know the, the, as I say, the spread changes all the time depending on the time of the day, any news events, certain news events can make the spread really wide. Trump as well, even when he tweets, believe it or not, when Trump uh, releases some news or he tweets on, on Twitter, the spreads can really widen and you know that can really affect traders especially day traders that haven't allowed for the variations in spread in their testing. So let me just give you a little bit of a, more of a visual example on this and why it can be important to take this into consideration. Okay, so let's say that you're trading a pair with a very high spread and the spread is 10 pips, right? So the difference between the bid and the ask is 10 pips. And as we know, the bid price is what you can sell the currency for and the ask price is what you can buy it back for and vice versa. All right, so as we said, our spread is equal to 10 pips, right? And we take a trade and it's a buy and we buy the trade, we buy the currency and we exit for 20 pips, right? So we exit at a 20 pip profit. So as we know, we bought in down here. So this is our buy and we made 20 pips on the trade. However, we've got a 10 pip spread. So really, the money that we've taken away from this trade is only gonna be 10 pips because we've had a 10 pip spread. And obviously this is, you know, it's, it's only half your profit. So you really should be aware of what your spread is. And as I say, the spread is gonna vary depending on the time of the day that you trade. Obviously in more liquid times, so like the London Open, uh, there's going to be on certain pairs, there's going to be a lot more liquidity. I have had experience with this firsthand with some of my strategies through the evening. Obviously, round to the night when there's a new session starting. So for me in the UK, 10 o'clock at night when there's a new session starting, it's really late and the, the spreads can really widen. So sometimes I have to pay close attention to my trades follow them round into the morning and then in the morning if my if my set if my setup is still valid then I will place the trade then when the spread is lower okay so the next thing when we're talking about spreads that you really should be aware of is something called slippage so what slippage is is it's basically when you get filled at a price that you didn't ask to get filled at so let's say that I want to get out of my trade at a certain price, but the broker fills me at a different price. Or alternatively, let's say I wanna get into a position at a certain price, let's say I want to buy, but I get filled higher than I actually want to buy. So I'm getting in at a worse price. This, this, is, this gap or this difference is called slippage. Okay, and another myth buster here, right? People think that when this happens to them that it's their broker out to get them. That is not the case. When you place an order to your broker, it is just that, it's an order. And what it is, is you wait in line. You basically are, you're waiting in line and you say to your broker, I want to get out at this level. Now in certain news events and situations where the market moves very, very fast and there's sort of less liquidity and slippage is more of a factor, Let's say that the you know your stop loss may be there or your entry price or target, whatever the order is, let's say it's there, right? Let's pretend it's a stop and price is trading up here and it falls down very, very fast and there's not enough liquidity, right? Your order is now pending and the broker is literally filling orders as quick as they can. And again, this happens instantly, right? And as soon as your order is in line or is next in line, bang, they will fill it. The price that they fill it is 20 pips below your below like your original order. That's the price you get filled at. Now that's nothing to do with the broker. They don't do that intentionally. It is literally just to do with the liquidity in the market and how quickly they can fulfill their orders. This is going to change and have be more of a factor depending on the pair that you are trading, when you're trading it, whether there's any news events. So certain news events, depending on the time frame that you're in and the pair that you're trading, you may want to stay out so that you do not fall victim to slippage. And obviously the lower the time frame you're trading, this is gonna be even more of a damaging factor to your account. Okay, so another thing you should be aware of as we're on the subject of 
brokers and spread and that is rebates. So all rebates are is basically just an incentive from your broker and what they'll do is they'll basically just rebate or you know sort of reimburse you some of the some of your spread so let's say that you know you've got a two pip fixed spread or two pip variable spread at the end of the month or trading year or however your broker does it they may issue you a rebate so instead of a two pip fixed spread you may they may rebate you uh you know one pip on every trade so that's something that you may want to, you know, speak to your broker about or just find out whether that's a, something that you can take advantage of when you're looking at brokers and spreads. All right, so without making the video too long and too confusing, I hope that helped. If it did, then drop us a like and a comment. If you're unsure of anything, they think there's anything that I missed out, again, let me know in the comments below and I'll be sure to make another video on that. If you got value from this video, make sure you hit the like button hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell. If you wasn't already aware, this video is a part of a series I'm doing called Build a Solid Foundation, where the intention of it is to take you from novice to consistently profitable trader as efficiently as possible. So if you like the idea of that, again, hit the subscribe button so you stay updated and make sure you check out the next video in the playlist.